all the signs. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Any need for executive session? Okay, hearing none, please take a moment to review the minutes of the August 28th meeting. If it meets with your approval, I would entertain a motion to accept them. <coughs> Make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. A second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the August 28th meeting minutes, please state aye. 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 None opposed. Passes unanimously. Public safety. Todd, would you like to um, give us the background on the part time 911 dispatcher? Um, yeah, so he was requesting to actually um, hire um, Katie Wooden. She's a full time dispatcher for Erie County. Uh, and she's just looking for some extra hours and time. Uh, and I says, Would you hire her? He goes, Well, I did. <laughs> and he says, yes, by all means. And uh, Ms. Wooten has already got a lot of her certifications, her certifications, and her EMD certifications, so she should be a... I'm not exactly sure how many hours she's going to work, but we're not going to have a lot of time and training in here, so uh, I would uh, request starting this way that we can respond. All right, very good. And we approved tentatively approved yeah. Uh, over email due to the fact that you needed a part-time dispatcher. Yeah. By the way, we all come to these meetings all the time, so I didn't. I neglected to say that the meeting is recorded. But it's recorded. Um, very good. So <clears throat> the documentation from Ms. Wooden is here listed at 13:13 hour, effective, backdated to September 22nd. This would be a part-time union position. Any questions? Then I would entertain a motion to hire Katie Wooden. I make a motion to accept Katie Wooden as a part-time uh, dispatcher with, uh, under the rate that's been um, offered here. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of hiring, hiring Katie Wooden at 13, 13 hours as part-time <coughs> dispatcher, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Ashes unanimously. Seaway asks caseworker one. Keith, do you have information on that? Uh, this is a straight replacement for a resignation. Okay. To offer it to Joseph Bevavino. Effective October 16th. Correct. Very good. Any questions on this hire? Then I would entertain a motion to um, hire Joseph Bevavino. I'll make a motion to hire Joseph Bethavino at the rate of uh, 1448 an hour under the the, um, the statement made here. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed? That's what you have, please. I'm going to Sure. Pilot program. Ah, yes. This is your pilot, right? It is. It is. Um, I spoke with Dr. Clark at Bollinger <coughs> Enterprises regarding how their program works because I wasn't real familiar with it. If we were to hire somebody from Bollinger Enterprises and one of their clients, even at minimum wage, to do document scanning, we pay for the employee. We don't pay for the supervisor that comes with it. And the supervisor um, will work with, um, like myself, or if they're, whatever department they're doing some scanning in. How do you want it done? And they make sure that the client understands how to do it. And my goal here is, uh, by the end of the year, to at least have the uh, personnel files onto laser fish so that we don't have some that's in the file, some that's on laser fish. And then if it works out, then possibly continuing the program 
for other offices that want to um, get started with their digitizing their office and get rid of, rid of a lot of paper. And so that's what I'm looking to do. I talked to Judy and at 725 an hour, um, it would basically be $197.35 per week and that would include unemployment tax, the workers compensation, and for a 12 week program would be about uh, $2,368.20. So I'm asking that the um, board consider allowing, you know, to do a pilot program to see if this is something that we can help uh, the departments out with, but also then help the BEI clients. And the BEI would come in, see what we want to do, and then they would pick the right client for what we're trying to do. I have spoken with the union steward. He is fine with the pilot program. If we take it further, he will have to take it to his higher ups, whatever, to make sure that it won't be grieved. But he's fine with this. I'll make a motion to consider this pilot program just so we can start the discussion. Well, well are you motioning to adopt the, the I, mm, No, I'm just making a motion to put it out there for discussion. In general, if it's on the agenda, anyone can, there can be a presentation and a dialogue about it before any motion is made. Okay. And I would like to ask these records that are personnel records, are they, is there a potential for a confidentiality breach? They're not a county employee, they're actually someone we're using as a third party. I think that that could be an issue. Now, I have asked Mark about a confidentiality agreement mm -hmm. um, and asked him to write one up. And he said basically it is our building, our offices, our open records. You know, but yes, there would be as far as like social security numbers and the, and the birth dates. Well, you were talking about personnel files. Yes. So yeah, that's definitely. Mm -hmm. um, an important area that we should be protecting through confidentiality. That would be my only concern. I think this would be done in conjunction with human or human resources, and there would be there'd have to be. I would recommend having a confidentiality agreement, regardless of whether there's an open records um, scenario. Anyway, um, the the office, the open records officer, should handle open records requests, and and then mm -hmm. also our legal team. So they shouldn't be sharing any. Um, personal info. Are you, if, if you do the, I don't understand with the, the cleaning with BEI, we probably just have an overarching confidentiality clause with BEI and any and all employees. So that might cover because it would be the same thing. They're going to be, you know, it would be those same employees, that person that's supervising. I understand, but, I but, they're, but they, they're, they're, they're not so going so. into our files. Right. You know, when they're cleaning, they're not right. opening I mean, our files. Right, I mean, the, the, look, you have an overarching, mm -hmm. you know, with BEI, you know, it's not yeah. all employees type of a thing. There will be a clause in the contract that's specific, and it should be in all cleaning contracts, and anything you and such should not be shared. But I think to your point, we could have a generic NDA the county could have a general NDA with BEI that would cover everything like this. That's not a bad idea. The security of the files has been discussed with them at length, and I right. think that right. having a confidentiality right. agreement as a part of it is also. I was thinking, you know, instead of doing two different contracts, one. So, but you're one saying this is my spoken, uh, you've spoken with Dr. Clark in regard to the personnel files and the confidentiality, or just the cleaning? The cleaning. Because what, what you, the work process that you do when you're scanning is different than if you're cleaning a room and, and see something on a desk. I mean, you actually have to look at each document and determine do I need front and back and, and whatever. And you, you have notes about people's health issues in their files. Yep. You, you have notes about disciplinary in their files, um, pay rates in their files. Mm -hmm. So with the... <coughs> money be allocated, excuse me, the, the cost would be allocated back to 
to the department. So, for instance, if you're primarily in this pilot using people to put laser fiche HR files and you charge that back to HR, presumably, but we could allocate their time depending on. Well, Commissioner Eggleston had talked about the, the records um, account. Oh, there are two things that we should consider, in my opinion, as a part of this. <coughs> One would either be a budget adjustment to allocate funds from uh, another area, whether it be contingency or something else, in order to enact it. Or the second thing would be to uh, look into the records improvement fund, um, as this will be digitizing a large portion of our records that will then be disposed of. Um, so it, it technically it's improving records. And if, if the setup works, Long term, this will be uh, another path to a paperless, a more paperless environment. Who would this person answer to? Would be the department to which they're scanning the records. Okay, but overall, like, there's got to be someone. To For the pilot program, it would be uh, me. Okay, and would that be correct? I mean, it would, shouldn't it be HR? Well, well yeah. Well, I think that the the chief clerk is responsible for. You know, file transfers and everything else. The files are in her office. Yeah, I mean, I think that they would be done in conjunction with human, sir, human resources. I mean, absolutely. Okay, another question. Um, Pam, I know that um, now we have a new HR director and part of your duties have um, been removed from you. Isn't this something that you, you find time to do? I have been trying to find time. The hardest part is uh, you have to remove all those staples and sort. And I don't think that I can get it done before the end of the year. Okay. Can I raise a question about records improvement fund? Um, I don't know that it is or isn't. It seems to me there was a discussion before about using a person to do something for records improvement. And I thought there was something in that. It covers buying processes. It covers outside contracted services. But I thought prior commissioners. I thought something was discussed once before and they looked into it and it can't be used for wages of the county. I may be wrong, but I just want someone to review pardon? Okay, I just want someone to review it from that point because I'm not sure that, that it allows us to do wages. Yeah. It's it's very odd if we were contracting yeah, yeah, yeah. Perillo, even though it's essentially doing the same thing, but there's something weird about not using yeah. that to supplement your, your budget, your payroll budget. And that's something that we have to look into. So, and yeah, I, and I'm that. not positive if it's there or not, but I think this was right. brought up somehow before. Yeah, I, and and I don't know if that's a supplement in the sense of long term <coughs> or supplement in the sense in short term, like to get a project done. Like I, it, I, I think. Yeah. Get my records done from eight five to. But you're paying a contractor. Yes. You're not. We, we not weren't good. allowed to use it for an employee, whether mm -hmm. whether it was long term <coughs> or short term. And I, I just think that needs to be researched. research to be sure. presume the point of their program, BES program, is they want them to be employed, correct? Well, I mean, they don't want to do the contract as a 1099. We can do either way. So you could do 1099? Oh, I mean, the way I look at it is, is how is this any different than their cleaning service? I mean, like, technically speaking. Well, I mean, I understand that we're considering it as a part of the salary board, but, uh, yeah. you know, technically we could probably remove it from the salary board yeah. and just make an agreement with them and pay them a fee. Yeah, but this is a perfectly appropriate place to have the conversation, but it sounds like if the source of funds would be record retention, then we should have a record records meeting and discuss it there. Mm -hmm. And then kick yeah, it to absolutely. Kick it salary board or kick it to the commissioner's meeting, whichever. Okay. Assuming that it gets through that committee. Unless you can think of another source of funding. That sounds good to me. Commissioner Morrison, do you have any more thoughts? No. Okay, then um, we will just uh, leave this off of future agendas until it comes back to us by some other committee. So, okay, I see what you're saying. So you, are you saying that we take it back to record, the records committee and then discuss If that's that? where you're thinking the source of funding would come from, then don't we have, doesn't the committee have to make a recommendation on whether or not to spend it? So, that committee will have to meet and determine whether this is something that they slash we want to do. And well, I mean, I, I think that's one <coughs> channel that we can use for funding. I, I, I'd be fine utilizing this program now, like allocating funds from somewhere else. 
I don't. I mean, if everybody's comfortable with the program and the idea of utilizing it, I think that we can find twenty five hundred dollars, whether it be from a contingency fund or something else, that we could utilize. Well, I think we'll have to look at that because I don't know what we have left in there. Unless you want to, okay. I mean, let's put it this way: I would be comfortable with tabling it until the next meeting, and then having more information at that meeting. Okay. And your motion to table. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are tabling the pilot program agreement? Please say aye. Aye. All right. Next meeting will be October 9th. Is there anything else that wants to, needs to be brought to the board? Very well, then I've entertained a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned at 9.30.